Kamusta and hello. On the menu today, we're having pork guisantes, a local Hawaii favorite with a Filipino origin. You're gonna want to stick around to learn how to make this simple and delicious dish. The first thing we need to do is go to the meat market. We're on a hunt for a wild pig. The original wild pigs were brought to Hawaii by Polynesians centuries ago, and they are an important aspect in island traditions and legends. Unfortunately, nowadays, one of the biggest issues is wild pigs destroy crops and native plants. Considerable management is used to keep Hawaii's wild pig population in check. This is our good friend Mo. He's getting lined up on a wild pig. He's doing his small part in keeping Hawaii's native ecosystem healthy. All right, great job. That was quick and painless. Let's give a moment to respect and thank this pig for feeding us and our family. Thank you, Mr. Pig, and mahalo. We'll quickly field dress this pig and get ready for dinner. Let's go. All right, we're back at home. Let's get ready to cook some pork guisantes. We'll start by cutting the wild pig in strips. If you're unable to find wild pig, the store pork is fine. And if you're looking for a substitution for either, try skinless chicken thighs. And for those who are curious, wild pig tastes like a cross between pork and beef. The meat is a bit darker and delicious. Mm -mm -mm. We also went fishing for a coolie the night before, so let's fry these up as well. We'll serve our pork asantes with fried a coolie on the side. Now that's surf and turf. When you're done cutting your wild pork into strips, fill a big pot with water. Place the pot on the stove and turn on high. Then add a few tablespoons of white vinegar and a couple pinches of sea salt. Cover and bring to a boil. Add the wild pork to a colander and rinse under cold water. This process removes any of the excess blood and will make the meat even more delicious. The water is boiling, let's add the meat. The vinegar that we added to the water will help draw blood out of the meat and also tenderize it. You can see that the water turned this dark color. That's from the vinegar pooling and drawing the blood out of the meat. This will make it very delicious. And now for the rest of the ingredients. Let's start by cutting one whole yellow onion. We'll cut the onion into slices. Next, we'll cut two red bell peppers into slices as well. And then we'll cut each slice in half. Yeah, that's real nice. Now we'll use about eight cloves of garlic. Let's give that a fine mince, shall we? We're gonna be cooking our vegetables separate to prevent overcooking. On medium heat, add oil to a pan. Let's add the onions and cook until translucent. As we're cooking our onions, we're periodically checking our boiling meat. As the meat cooks, foam will start collecting at the surface. This foam is the result of impurities in the meat and must be removed. Simply spoon into a bowl and discard. Ah, that's more like it, no foam. The onions are now translucent, let's set them aside. Next up, let's add the sliced red bell pepper. We'll cook this until soft. The red bell pepper is now soft, let's set it aside. We're almost there guys, stay with us. Now let's add the chopped garlic to the pan. Simply toast the garlic, careful not to burn. We'll put that on the side when it's finished. That wild pork has been boiling for over an hour. Let's simply drain and rinse with cool water. That rinsing process will make the meat taste wonderful. Now let's add the pork back to the frying pan. Next up, let's add a can of tomato sauce. Then we'll add a can of water to thin it out. I wish you guys can just smell the aroma that's coming out of this kitchen right now. The tomato sauce and the pork go so well together. And we're almost done guys, nobody move. Let's add a couple bay leaves and put the pan on simmer. Everybody simmer down now. Thank you for sticking with us this long. We're gonna share with you the family secret ingredient, cream of mushroom soup. Yes, you heard that right. This will give a creamy, rich taste to the pork gonsantes. And when others eat it, they'll be in shock by how delicious it is. And you'll keep them guessing to what the secret ingredient actually is. We added a full can of cream of mushroom soup. We'll simmer this for another 40 minutes. 40 minutes is done. 
we added a little bit more water to thin out the consistency. You're looking for like a nice creamy velvety sauce. Now we'll add some patis or fish sauce. And now for the guisantes or the green peas, another star of the show. This is frozen green peas that have been defrosted. About two cups worth is going in. Oh, now doesn't that look good? Let's put a cover on this and cook for 10 minutes. If your cover no more handles, no problem. 10 minutes is done. Now let's fold in the vegetables that we cooked earlier. Oh man, is that looking and smelling good. And there we have it folks, pork guisantes, AKA pork and peas. And all we have to do now is sit down and enjoy the blessings. But first, remember the fried akuli we made earlier? Let's make it even better. We're gonna make a topping for the fish. Add sliced onions to a bowl, followed by sliced cherry tomatoes. Oh, and this little beauty is baga ong, a Filipino condiment made from fermented fish. Oh, and baga ong is stinky, salty, sweet, savory, complex. The list goes on and on, baby. It's a must have when you eat fried fish. Let's go. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Pork de Santes with wild pig. Remember, you can use the store-bought pig, but the wild pig is wild. We got the side order of fresh fried akuli, eaten with tomato, onion, and baga ong. Woo! All right, guys, enough talking. We're going in. Until next time, aloha.